when you, you mentioned joining kind of early on uh, in the company's history, right? Just 32 people and given especially yep. the scale of what y'all are doing, that that is a very small number. Um, what was it like coming in? What, what was kind of the state of the product at that point? And, you know, what did you start working on and how has that evolved over time? Yeah, so uh, state of the project, uh, we were late. I mean, you know, like like all good engineering right. projects, right? Like right. you're late. I feel like you're late the when you start, right? But um, the um, I was the third or fourth electrical engineer uh, on the team, and so like okay. they had started hiring electrical engineers in 2021, but had kind of been like you know, I mean, the company was formed uh, like in uh, 2019, I believe, and so you know they had had some amount of time. Uh, they were trying to work with a contractor and uh, get get some of the electrical design done. But, you know, uh, one of the like ethos I think at oxide is like really doing things from the ground up and understanding, uh, like understanding where you're coming from, why you're doing the thing and, and really like from first principles. And I think it was a challenge to instill that, um, into, you know, a, a partner or a contractor and just, and like, and it's, a, it's a challenge to, you know, really like you, we want to own this stuff and we want to, but it's hard to do that when you don't have employees, I think. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a challenge generally. And I'm sure that there are some times that that can work out. Uh, but in this case, it was one of those things where like, you know, we didn't want to take AMD's reference design and just plop it down on a, uh, on a, you know, a different circuit board and go like, we wanted to do things really differently. And, and, but you need people engaged in that and you need people who like are ready to join that kind of, uh, like movement, I feel like. Right. And, and without that, it's just really hard to get successful outcomes. So when I join, I mean, we joke, I say that like, uh, when I joined the house was still on fire. I, you know, like the, the guys who came before me, I mean, Tom and RFK especially had started a little earlier and, um, you know, they were trying to get like, you know, get the train back on the tracks, but, um, you know, the schematic, like we had a lot of schematic work and a lot of, a lot of stuff to do. So we were right in the middle of, uh, I mean, theoretically we were going to tape out the gimlet server board. So the server board was going to be the first board that we were going to build out. And we were supposed to tape that out, I think in June, maybe. And, you know, like it kind of dragged on a little bit. I mean, we got in there and I mean, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of cleanup and a lot of changes. And we realized like some things weren't communicated very clearly. And, you know, anyway, lots, lots of stuff. Uh, but you know, you had, uh, and then, you know, thankfully, you know, I mean, we had Eric and Aaron join and, uh, Ian eventually. And so a lot of, a lot of good people joined kind of, you know, along this, this process. Um, but you know, we, we had to like write the ship and get, get the, uh, get the schematic out the door so we could build these parts and then, uh, and do bring up. And, you know, I, we have, uh, on, I think uh, you mentioned oxide and friends. We have a couple of, of different episodes that talk through some of the, the war stories of bringing some of that hardware up and, you know, the, um, I mean, various, you know, it, it's been interesting cause like we're, it's a remote company. So like, we're not all like able to go to the office every day like, and, and there isn't like an electronics lab that we all share, which is right. kind of how life was before. And so, you know, bringing up Gimlet, um, I mean, I, I remember, so our, our, our contract manufacturer and partner is in Minnesota. So it's, I'm up in Wisconsin. So it's, you know, it's about four ish hours away. Um, and I remember, so we had been there at, in Minnesota to do bring up and had kind of gotten, I mean, we'd gotten a lot of problems figured out on the board and, you know, because the board had kind of been handed off and handed off, it's kind of like the, I mean, they're just like, you know, problems at all of the seams. Right. And, you know, it was right. like, you could, you could see like, had we done this differently and we had like one team own the thing, like it just would have been a little bit smoother for sure. Um, but we had, we had spent two weeks there in Minnesota with, you know, a bunch of people coming in from, you know, all over the country, uh, getting the thing built up. And when we, we, you know, we, our two weeks was up 
the server still didn't boot, but it kind of mostly powered on. But, you know, we had, you know, a pretty big ding list of a lot of rework to do and everything. And so mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, like a week or two later, I had to drive halfway back there and I met one of the uh, one of the employees from Benchmark, our ODM, you know, and our two minivans. And we pull up and we like I pull all of these servers out, yeah. you know, in, in the <laughs> in the parking lot of like a, a cheese store or something, which right. is a very like Wisconsin <laughs> thing. Right. So. Uh, but you know, we're and putting all those in. So I brought them back to my house and then, you know, Eric is here local. And so he and I finished some of the rework on that stuff and kind of shipped them out as we got things to boot and everything. But yeah, you end up, you end up doing a lot of like, you know, strange stuff. I mean, I, I had done some rework and some soldering at GE just for, you know, being norm, you know, being like normal debug process on a circuit board and that kind of thing. And right. so, but you know, got, got, even more opportunity to do a lot of that on this stuff. So, you know, uh, all, all, all like our 12 rev a gimlets that we, you know, built, like all came through, you know, the Wisconsin manufacturing shop here and they were like piled right. up behind me and in, in my office for uh, a couple of weeks until we got, until we got them functional enough to where like we could legitimately hand them out to our teammates and you know they might actually like boot and do things. So. Right. Well, that is uh, uh, quite the story of the, the cheese store handoff. Um, yes. <laughs> you know, you mentioned uh, the kind of like owning the full stack. And I'm also, um, I don't know if I'm uh, uh, saying this or admitting this, but I also read Hacker News quite a bit. Um, okay. And um, one of the things that I think uh, Oxide might be frequently accused of is like reinventing the wheel a bunch of times. Um, but one of the things that I think is short-sighted about that outlook is um yes right like it's more effort up front uh to do things a little bit different or understand the whole system or, or maybe build some parts of the system yourself but you all have to support these racks once they go out right and you are going to see lots of behavior right and so like while there it may accelerate the process of developing the initial product the long-term burden that that's going to impose is actually going to be pretty big so i think you know it's a it's a in the context that you are working, it's a very valid outlook to have. And, and also, you know, people externally get to benefit from the, the right. interesting things you are doing too. Well, and, yeah. And I hope that our, our customers feel like we, you know, there's like, you know, we're like the person that they have to go to. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, there are no excuses. I mean, we need to own our problems, uh, you know, to the extent that we can. And like that, that's where, you know, I know, uh, you know, Brian and Steve having run data centers and other things, you know, have lots of stories about like getting involved with third party, you know, third party vendors on things. And like, there's a lot of finger pointing and a lot of stuff. And like one of the core things I think for us at Oxide is really just, we, we, we want to own the stuff and we want to own all of it. And, and, you know, to the extent that we can, I mean, there, there are places where like, we just can't own that because like someone won't give us the code for that. Or, right. you know, you see there are lots of, lots of, you know, places like that, but we, we want to have ownership of as much of it as we possibly can so that we can both understand it, make sure that we have the right uh, visibility into the design and, and then also be able to fix problems and support our customers in the best way possible.